2022 steamer projections for the twins rotation on today's episode of locks on twins you are locked on twins your daily minnesota twins podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day And welcome to the Locked Up Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Thursday, January 6th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thank you for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. You can follow me on Twitter at NashWalker9. You can follow the show at Locked On Twins. And we're rolling on with Steamer Projections. We've had the infield. We've had the outfield. We're going to look at the rotation and the bullpen today. If the Twins rotation was more complete, we would have a full episode. For the twins rotation but they have three starters so we're going to lump in the bullpen today and we're going to do it in a timely manner so i can get my thoughts out about all these guys because these projections like the infield and outfield are interesting and some of them i think are too conservative and some of them i think are really kind of exciting and others are right on the money i think for 2022 so i want to look at those today if you didn't listen to the infield and outfield seamer projections I suggest that you do that. Fangraphs has these out for the Twins, and we're breaking them down on the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Lockdown Network, your team every day. Let's look at these projections. We're going to get right into it. Bailey Ober projects as the Twins' most valuable starting pitcher, most valuable pitcher next year. Take that statement. Just think about that. If I told you before 2021 that in 2022 on January 6th, Bailey Ober was going to project as the Twins' most valuable pitcher by Steamer in 2022. What would you have said to me? What would you think? It's a reality. Bailey Ober projects as the Twins' best pitcher next year in terms of wins above replacement. Uh, that you know doesn't include Taylor Rogers, who's expected to have the lowest ERA by far. Bailey Ober, 451 ERA projection, 26 starts. 1.9 wins above replacement. That's better than Casey Mize of the Detroit Tigers, which is encouraging and amazing for, for Ober. Coming into last year, expectations just not anywhere for Bailey Ober. Like, I don't I don't think anyone expected him to have the season he did. But why? Because he was amazing in the minors. And yeah, he didn't have the 98 mile an hour fastball, but he has a fastball that gets on hitters so quickly and he can get outs with. And Bailey Ober allowed more homers last year than walks. So if you can cut down his homers, and Steamer has him giving up 25 homers. I believe he gave up 19, uh, or I believe he gave up 20 in like 92 innings last year and still had an above-average ERA, which is amazing. But Steamer has him giving up 25 in 145 innings. So a little bit better, and then maybe a little bit of regression in the other areas. I want to look at his line from last year here to just compare a little bit. Last year, Bailey over 419 ERA, 102 ERA+. plus. 9.4 strikeouts per nine. We like to look at strikeout rate more than anything, 25%. So very good last year, as we know, for Bailey Ober. And Fangraphs, Seamer says he will be their best starter in 2022. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say this won't hold. But at least on January 6th, this is where we're at. I would have given you probably, I don't know, nine other names before Bailey Ober. Because some of those names would be, oh, it's someone not currently on the roster. If you would have told me last year that Bailey Ober is going to project as their best starter for 2022, I would have said, no, it's going to be Kent Maeda. No, it's going to be Jose Barrios. No, it's going to be someone they've signed. No, it's going to be Jordan Balazovic, Yolanderon, anybody really before Bailey Ober. And that's not because Ober wasn't amazing in the minors. He was. It was just because he wasn't on the radar. You know, he was forgotten about, I think, coming through and... He really showed up last year in a big way. So a lot to break down with Ober. The biggest thing being that he projects as their best pitcher next year, uh, the most valuable pitcher for them next year. But also for him, that's just awesome. Like he's now entrenched in the twin starting rotation. And maybe Joe Ryan's the opening day starter at this point, but I think Bailey Ober has a really strong case to start on opening day for the twins. But this, this roster, I just don't think is going to hold. I don't think it's going to be – Bailey Ober at the top here when we uh, we get ready for spring training or go into the season. I, I don't think it's going to be Ober as the most valuable starter in terms of projections for the Twins next year. Like when Pakoda comes out, when Pakoda comes out, if Ober is still 
projected to be the twins most valuable starter i'll admit i'm wrong i just don't i don't think that that's going to happen it might i've been wrong about this all off season i just don't think that's going to happen i i think he's a solid right now i think they should plan on him being like a four for the 2022 twins and tom froming made a video about managing expectations for ober and ryan going into next year and it's unfair because they're relied upon now in this rotation and i like them both for similar reasons like great fastballs great command, good secondary stuff, and, and just able to get outside a high level. I like them both, but to expect them to be a one and two is uh, – that's asking for trouble, I would say, for next year's team. But if they're your three and four, even if one of them's your three and Bundy's your four, I think Ryan Ober and Bundy can probably be shuffled. Um, but I would put actually Bundy as a five at this point after the season he had. And I, I would be – I could be talked into Bailey Ober as a three or Joe Ryan as a three. But I think more likely they should be fours and fives. Speaking of Joe Ryan, Fangraph Steamer has him for a lower ERA than Ober in 142 innings, but less wins above replacement, 148 strikeouts, 1.24 whip, more strikeouts than Ober. Joe Ryan last year was awesome for four starts, struggled in his last start for the Twins. As we know, fastball just on a ramp. That thing's on a ramp. Like when you watch him pitch, his fastball – it just rises at an unbelievable level. And I think for him next year, again, we got to manage expectations for both these guys. We got to manage expectations for Joe Ryan. People got really excited as they should. And it's great because we needed a little bit of that excitement after Nelson Cruz moved over to, uh, to Tampa Bay, needed some excitement coming back. And Joe Ryan certainly provided that for the twins. So I'm excited about both these guys. And I think what's great is that steamer, if they were to give the Twins 145 and 142 innings next year after a wiped minor league season in 2020 and limited seasons in 2021, especially for Ober, I think that'd be amazing if Ober could give you 145 innings and, and Ryan could give you 142 this summer. That would be great for both of them. Let's talk about Dylan Bundy, Randy Domnack, and the bullpen after this word from Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. It's the new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you'll want to eat it, unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill. You want to eat healthy, but it just gets so boring. By like week three, you might be thinking, this is just not worth it. Where's the chocolate? Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes at home, in the pantry, at the office, in the car, wherever. Throw out all the sugar or calorie-filled treats, replace them with Built Bar, and go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you again for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available on all podcast platforms. Looking at steamer projections for the Twins pitchers next year. Dylan Bundy, 1.2 wins above replacement, a 4.98 ERA in 166 innings. That would not be at the average um, for 2022. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. That's... uh. That's a five. Like, that's a borderline five. A 498 ERA, a 480 FIP, and 1.2 wins above replacement. And that's like a spot starter. And that's, I'm going to be honest, what I expect from Dylan Bundy next year. And there's some upside with him, certainly. Like, he could be a lot better than this. He can be worse than this, as he was in 2021. This is probably about right in 29 starts. Innings eater. They have him pitching the most innings on the Twins next year, which is... This is not it's it's unfortunate for Dylan Bundy because if this would have ha if this happened in a different way, if the twins would have gone out and made some big additions and then signed Dylan Bundy, I wouldn't be as hard on Dylan Bundy. I'm hard on Dylan Bundy, A, because this was so predictable, and B because the twins they didn't they didn't do anything else, you know. And so we we have Dylan Bundy. That's what they gave us before the the lockout. They gave us Dylan Bundy and the rotation. And I think I was someone who bought into Bundy's breakout in the short in 2020. And I think he can potentially get back to that success again. But at this point, like to say that he's going to pitch the most innings on the twins next year and have a 498 ERA. I don't know how you can get more sad than that. Like that's, that's just sad for the team next year. Randy Dobnak. This is interesting because I think people have forgotten about Dob a lot. 
482 ERA in 23 starts, 31 games. They have him pitching 134 innings, a 465 whip or FIP, excuse me, and a 1.1 wins above replacement mark. I think Dobb is like Ryan Jeffers, an underrated, like bounce back, have a strong year candidate. And a lot of people are down on Randy Dobnak. And I understand because he was a little bit of a flash in the pan in 2019 and just hasn't been good since. 2019 and he was actually great in his first five starts so i shouldn't say that i'm actually i take that back he was great in his first couple starts of 2020 and the shortened season was awesome like i had cy young randy domnak on one of my twitter hashtag memes like i was memeing randy domnak for rookie of the year and and for cy young because he actually in a lot of ways with kenta maeda carried the twins rotation when jose Barrios was struggling and Michael Pineda was out with his suspension. Randy Domek was pitching phenomenally well. The second half of 2020 was very bad. 2021 was horrific for him in more ways than just pitching poorly. He was hurt, and it just didn't go well at all. But in 2019, Randy Domek's sinker had more break than any sinker in baseball, and it was by such a large margin. Domek's sinker is a special sinker, and I'm going to continue to buy in, hopefully, to that sinker that he's going to get a lot of ground balls. We saw it even at points last year where he's able to get out at a very, very quick rate because he guys just pound the ball into the ground off him. Hanging sliders, too much movement sometimes on the sinker where he loses his command. That's been a downfall and just too many walks. But you hope for Dobnak next year he can get back to being the ground ball machine we saw in 2019 and then for that first half of 2020. And I would actually put him, if I, I'm, we're going to do this, five twins who I could see bouncing back or having a surprising good year in 2022 and i'm gonna make that list and we'll have a podcast and we'll have an article probably next week Dominic's gonna be on there and i don't know where he'll rank but he's gonna be on there because he's had past success there are actual numbers that back up that success there, there's not just oh my goodness they call this guy up from the uh whatever the team the pixie dust fairies or whatever team he was playing for and works his way up the system it happened for a reason because that sinker is a special pitch because he gets a lot of ground balls because he can work his way deep into games with low pitch counts because he gets so much contact. And the slider hung last year. I mean, I remember Aaron Judge. I was at the game. Aaron Judge just destroying a Randy Dobnak slider that he left in the zone. But improved command next year, and I think Dob can get back to uh, to who he was before. And maybe not that good, but back to being an effective starter. I think he can be an effective starter slash swingman. For the twins, I think he's kind of forgotten, and and I'm not saying that's wrong. Like I'm not saying it's wrong that, oh, we're not looking at Randy Dominic. I don't blame you if you're not, but just keep him in the back of your mind because I think there are numbers, and we'll talk about them next week, and I'll write about them that show 2021 could have been more of an outlier for him than 2019 was. But we'll see about that. I could be wrong about him in 2022. I just feel that he'll bounce back. Let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use our promo code locked on to get started. That's Bet Online. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Taylor Rogers going to the bullpen for the Twins because we have three starters to talk about in Randy Domac. That's uh that's our rotation we're looking at. So let's go to the bullpen. Taylor Rogers, Steamer has him for a really great season. 313 ERA, 67 innings, a FIP right at three, 1.1 wins above replacement. Raj, another one. I mean, coming off an injury, I think it was the same injury as Dobnak had last year with the uh, the finger sprain. Um, Dobnak had a nail issue, I think, too. But Rogers is coming off an interesting year. He was outstanding right up until the All-Star break when he gave up a grand slam to Jake Rogers, no relation, I don't believe. To Taylor gave up a grand slam and it just screwed his ERA because he ended up getting shut down later in the season with that finger injury and missed, I think, the last month and a half or so of the season. So his numbers were were warped by that grand slam. Before that grand slam, he was having a, a tremendous season, was back to who he had been before 2020. We pointed at 2020 constantly and said, 
it was bad luck. It was a lot of bad luck. It was a lot of bad luck. And it turned out to be true. And Rodgers got back to who he was, gave up the Grand Slam. Things were altered. I'm not saying the Grand, grand Slam doesn't count. Like that counts as, as a Grand Slam. But it just warped a lot of the numbers. And I think this is a good projection for him if he's healthy. That just remains to be seen whether Rodgers is healthy coming into 2022. There are some interesting other bullpen projections here. Jorge Alcala, 4.03 ERA in 62 innings, over of strikeout per inning, uh, 0.3 wins above replacement. I'm much higher on Alcala for next year than uh, than Steamer is. And I think because of his second half, because he had found his command, because his changeup looked amazing in the second half i almost convinced myself that he should be getting stretched out again that he should be throwing 70 to 100 innings next year in a kind of yohan duran role i've described because i'm i'm so sold on jorge alcala i'm just so sold on his stuff and his ability i think he's gonna get big time outs for the twins in 2022 i think he's gonna get big time outs for the twins in the future for the foreseeable future and I'm very confident in that because of the stuff and because of his newfound command. His strikeout to walk ratio in the second half was outstanding. Jorge Alcala, I'm I'm excited about, and I like him a lot more than this projection system does for 2022. Caleb Thielbar, 4.11 ERA, 0.3 wins above replacement, 62 innings. Thielbar has been awesome for the Twins the last two years. Great second lefty in the bullpen. Still got to spot him up against mostly lefties, but he's done his job in a big time way. I think since uh, since the Twins gave him that chance in 2020, he's been awesome. Tyler Duffy, they have for a 419 ERA in 66 innings. Duffy, I think it's an underrated part of what went wrong in the first half of 2021. Duffy just wasn't Duffy, and he was so important to the team in 2019 in the second half and so important to the team in 2020 in their bid to win the division again, that when he struggled in 2021, it was overlooked because, you know, Buxton was hurt. Buxton got hurt. Maeda was struggling so mightily. The pitching staff was horrible. The offense was struggling in big spots. Duffy was bad too. And he ended up bouncing back for the second half of the year, but his fastball velocity is down, strikeout rates down, walk rates up. I'm not super sold on Duffy for 2022 and steamer isn't either. And I hope I'm wrong. And I think he can still get out of some jams. I think he's still a quality reliever, but Duffy was one of the best relievers in baseball in 2019 and 2020 combined. I just don't think he's that guy anymore. And that shows you the volatility of relievers. I thought there was a question on whether the twins would tender Tyler Duffy. They do. And I think it was the right decision because I think he will still be effective. As I said, just maybe not the same guy we've come to know. Uh, since 2019 and 2020. Steamer's got you on for a 392 ERA in 22 innings. I hope he pitches more than 22 innings for the Twins next year. Uh, Lewis Thorpe, they have throwing 78 innings for the Twins. I would take the under, and they have a 505 ERA on Lewis Thorpe. Again, I would take the under on 78 innings. Josh Weiner, they have for 92 innings at a 514 ERA. He might throw 92 innings for the Twins. He probably will throw 92 innings, Josh Weiner. But I will take the under on his ERA as well. I think a high fours ERA would be nice for Winder, and, and you could get right around league average starting pitching from Winder. That would really help the Twins, and, and you'd be happy with that. But there are some other interesting ones. Jordan Balzavic, they have throwing 46 innings at a 512 ERA. Danny Coulom, they have throwing 40 innings at a 401 ERA. Cody Stashak is back in the picture for 45 innings and a 451 ERA. Griffin Jacks, 98 innings and a 570 ERA. Uh, very interesting projections here. Giovanni Moran, 46 innings, 419 ERA. So a lot of fours, some fives. This is a picture of the Twins. I mean, this is a picture of their, their rotation. This is a picture of their bullpen. I will say higher on Alcala for sure. I think he's going to become their best right-handed reliever in the next couple of years, and I think it's going to happen in 2022 uh, for Jorge Alcala. But Rodgers, I think, is about right. I think for Dobnak, I'll take the under on a 482 ERA actually for next year. I think Joe Ryan and Bailey Ober are right on. Dylan Bundy's probably right on. So this is this is a decent picture. And the prospects, they're just kind of shooting darts at a board and seeing what hits. But this is an interesting picture. I mean, I think this gives you a good idea of what the Twins need to do. And next week, we're going to talk about steamer projections for some free agents and trade targets that are remaining for the Twins to go after. Um, so we'll do that next week. But I want to thank you for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all podcast platforms. Thank you again for listening. Have a great day and go Twins.